on the strategy for supernatural dimension of life as well as in guidance and for that to happen we need to understand what Jesus has done for us not only the cross of Calvary but from eternity to eternity it lays a foundation for you and I to have life Jesus said I came to give you life and life more abundantly there is a basis for which what he said he not only saved us from our sin but he came to give us life here on this earth the eternal life to become translated here on this earth so that eternal life is lived here in time amen, amen? and so we can see what the law of moses could not do weak as it was through the flesh god did sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin he condemned sin in the flesh we must understand that when jesus came into this world he not only came to remove sin from our lives but he came to correct everything that sin brought into this world he removed the power foundation for the devil to operate he removed the foundation for sin to operate he removed the foundation for demonic powers to operate everything that is of the devil and sin and sickness and death can no longer function if you and i function in the law of the spirit of life every other law is shut down for that reason we have tremendous hope of living eternal life here on this earth he came to give us life his life so that we may have life abundantly Jesus said he came to give us life and life more abundantly he came to give us his life his eternal life that will now produce abundant life amen because sometimes we we thought it's in nice English language he came to give us life and life more abundantly but we don't know what is what both the lives are different he came to give us his eternal life the life that he had with the father not the life that he had as jesus he came to give us that eternal life so that when that eternal life comes in then it becomes the abundant life here on this earth you believe that so that's how it is so when the bible was translated it was not translated by apostles it was translated by translators and they were held gathered together by the by king james he gathered all the translators together and helped and they got as far as english language is concerned they got it right but as far as the scriptural patterns and explanation they didn't get it all right is it okay yes. right. god saved the queen and the king but they didn't get it right he said like you know how it says the two shall become one but the transliteration reads like the two shall become one in the one the two shall become one in the one because the two can never become one because two is always two two different personality two different life two different hearts two different stomachs i can see that deep sound coming from there <laughs> the laughter is very strong agreement uh, two different lives two different personality two different emotions how can the two become one except in the one do we have other scriptures that help us yes what god has joined together let no man put asunder so what is a force that brings the two to become one god so is the scriptural translation clear yes the two shall become one in the 
one. So not everything that is there is according to what it should be there. Are we hearing? Because the translators could only translate language. They could not translate concepts and add to what the scriptures needed to unfold. You hearing me? And that's why it's important. Like, you know, when I said, he shouted all the more. All right, this is, this is a blind Bartimaeus. He shouted all the more. What it meant was, he shouted as though there was more. Meaning, when he shouted, it was not like one man shouting. When he shouted, it was like hundreds of them shouting at the same time. How do you know? Because that's what Jericho happened. They all shouted and the walls came down. So there was a company that shouted, not just one. And where was this man sitting? Outside Jericho. Are we hearing? And so these are things like this that we need to, we, we need to understand well. Silver and gold have I none. That's a lie. Because Peter had money. He still had the fishing business. His mother-in-law and his wife was looking after the fishing business. So what does he mean? Silver and gold have I none. He says silver and gold avails to nothing. Silver and gold will not produce anything for you. Young man, you're sitting here with your, your feet is lame. You get money, receive money, next day you collect again, but it's not going to help you because money is not your problem. What you need is hands and feet. Such as I have, give I unto you. You don't need money because money will not change your state. Your hands will still be weak. Your feet will still be weak. So silver and gold avails nothing. Or brings nothing to you. Not that silver and gold have I none. So can you see why we need to, to have truth built for us in a proper contextual point? Yeah. And so when you listen to all these things, it will help you put things in context. Like the scripture in Isaiah 61 the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. That's what he reads in your language. But it's the translation, uh, transliteration reads this way. The spirit of the Lord and God is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is the Holy Ghost. God is the Father. The, tr the, 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 the deity dwell in him in a bodily form. Father and the Holy Spirit dwell in the body of Jesus. Where do we find that? Colossians 2, 9, 1, 19. The fullness of the Godhead dwell in him in a bodily form. Amen? So these are things that we, you and I need to put in together. Are you clear? So if you understand the contextual point in what the Holy Spirit is saying, then it becomes clearer to you. So as I, as I mentioned to you, we, we need to go, go right into what the scripture is saying so that we can be sharper and clearer. Amen? What the law of Moses could not do, God did. What law? The law of Moses. What he tried to do, he could not do. God used the law to restrain and restrict people from sin, but he could not remove sin. But the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Are we hearing? The law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Until Christ came, the law was needed to keep man from sinning, to stop sin from going to full blast. Because if sin keep on moving at that pace, it will swallow man up. So God put a law. So he sent law to prevent man from breaking freely and prevent sin from maturing too quickly. To restrain it, to retard it, so that Jesus could come at the right time and take off. So the whole of mankind will not plunge into death. It happened once in Genesis chapter 6. 
that every thought and every intention of man was continually evil and God regretted that he made man. But that word there is also a confusing word. He regretted that man came in between this war, that he became killed in the crossfire between God and the devil. That's what God regretted. God didn't regret creating man. He regretted that man came in between the crossfire. Just say yes. Okay, don't look like, a, you know, where is that in the Bible? It is there. So let me take you all the way back to Genesis. Is it okay? Let me take you to Genesis and it's, we're going to start to discover the word of the Lord. Amen? And I want you to try to follow me well because we're going to go to places where we need to be very alert. Amen? So that we can see things well and understand the history of things. So that we can see what the future holds for our lives. Can you say amen to that? Yes. You ready? Yes. Sharp? Yes. Accurate? Yes. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How many heavens? Three heavens and one earth. We are Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There are three heavens and one earth. Atmospheric heaven, heavenlies, and the third heavens. Atmospheric heaven, the heavenlies, and the third heaven, which is the place where God dwells. And he created one earth. Now, how many of you know when God created all things, all things are beautiful? Amen. So between verse 1 and verse 2, verse 2 it says this, The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Between verse 1 and verse 2, something had happened. It's called a Genesis gap. Are you with me? It's a time gap. When God created the heavens and the earth, everything was beautiful. It is in verse 1 that he created angels. When God said he created the heavens and the earth, he created angels in that verse. Are you with me? He created Lucifer. He created him in a certain manner. He created him in a certain way, in a certain form, together with all the hosts of angels, the stars, the moon, and everything else. All things were set in beauty. But something happened during that period of time. So we don't know how long it was before Lucifer sinned. So that's why the earth is millions and millions of years old. Man's history is not millions. Are you hearing me? The earth is millions and millions of years of age, but the man's, man's history is not millions and millions of years of age. Are we hearing? For, from the recreation of man, it's, uh, you know, six days God created man, recreated man. That's six days to recreate the whole earth. Then another six days has been there. On the seventh day he rested, all right? That's seven days. And then from then on, we have six days. Just agree with me because I did the study. Okay. I did the study. So you don't, don't have to try to force yourself in trying to be a, a rocket scientist. All right? So this is how it is. Now, I'll explain this to you in a, in a moment. So when God created the heavens and the earth, everything was beautiful. Because in eternity, there is no time. So we don't know how to measure time. But what we know is that when we dig into the earth, we know that it's millions in, of years of age. Are we hearing? Yes. And so we can see that between Genesis 1 and Genesis verse 2, Genesis 1, 1, 2, Genesis 1, 2, there is a gap in between called a Genesis gap of time. What has happened, there are some pictures in the Bible that shows you what actually happened. Are we hearing? Yes. 
And sometimes it's important to know, other times it's not important to know. But for you, it's quite important to know. Because I want to lay the foundation so that you can build the church very accurately and remove false doctrine from your mind. Especially the doctrine about devils. Because this is where the fault line of the church lies. We are built on superstition and myth rather than on facts and truth. So we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, that all things were created beautiful. Amen? So we, let's go to Genesis 1.1 1, 1 and find out the things that happen before we receive verse 2. Okay, you're not interested. Are you wanting to come? Okay. Let's go to heaven, all right? Let's go to heaven and find out all these things that happen. Now, I, 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 don't, I don't have notes to follow, so I, you have to write. Actually, I don't have notes at any time, but I just wanted to impress you now. Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel. I think we will start with Ezekiel. This is a very, very interesting topic. Very interesting topic. You know? Ezekiel 28. In verse 11, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord, you had the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, ruby, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise, and emerald, and the gold and the workmanship of your settings and sockets was in you. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I place you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walk in the midst of the stones of fire. You were blameless in all your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. By the abundance of your trade, you were internally filled with violence and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you out as profane from the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I put you before kings that they may see you. By the multitude of your iniquities, in unrighteousness of your trade, you profane your sanctuaries, Therefore, I brought fire from the midst of you, and I, it consumed you. I have turned you to ashes on the earth in the eyes of all who see you. All who know you among the peoples are appalled at you. You have become terrified. You will cease to be forever. The devil hates me to teach this subject. Because if you look at the last verse that we just read in verse 19, you know what he says? He says, you, you will cease to be forever. That simply means the forever aspect of him is cut off and brought into time so that he is going to be treated just like men. Let me rephrase this. The devil, when God created him, he was part of an eternal thing. Are you with me? Not confined to time. They were the angelic creation who dwell on the, in the heavenly realm. Is that right? But because of what has happened, God said, look, this is what I have declared. You will cease to be in operation in the eternal things. I will now bring you down to this earth 
to such an extent I will cut short in time that you will be treated just like men limited in time if you don't understand it's okay I just thought I wanted to impress you but it looks like after coffee you are looking funny so let me take you verse by verse and explain to you what Satan had what he lost what we have so that you never never feel that he has more than you the reason why you are so angry that God created men was God created men better than angels that was his contention that God created men more beautiful than him it became the frustration inside his heart so follow me can you yes. so let's do verse by verse let's dissect and bisect this frog I mean the devil and uh, let's just get there it says in verse 1 verse 11 you had the seal of perfection write down when God created Lucifer he had the seal of perfection that means he was perfect when he was created so God didn't create a devil God created Lucifer number one he had the seal of perfection that means they when God created Lucifer he was perfect God did not create Satan God created Lucifer are we hearing so he had the seal of perfection that simply means as far as quality control is concerned he was the best that was made at that moment of time he had the seal of perfection he was not the most perfect one in the future but he was a perfect one in his state he was perfect this is very important because he always had a problem with his own identity like some of us he was perfect in his state but he was not the best of all creation all right and this is very important for you to know because you think the devil was created as the most beautiful trophy no no he was created perfect in his state as far as that product was concerned it was the best it was but it does not mean there was no other product beside him yeah I want you to see all these things because these are the things that creates conflicts in our lives the same thing that was continually eating Lucifer is what eats us he was perfect in his state but he was not the perfect of all products he was perfect as a product Sort this out in your own heart, okay? So that there is no comparison. You're going to see the devil's going to compare very soon. So if you start to compare yourself one with the other, you are foolish. That's why you always compete because you compare. I'm not good, you know. Always something is not right. Your nose is not too long, your ears is too short. And you know, always something is wrong somewhere. You never are happy. As long as that devil is there, you're going to have problems. You're going to try to push yourself up. You're going to push yourself down. You're going to push your people out. Are you breathing? Yes. <laughs> this is only the first verse. We haven't gone very far. You can pin the devil immediately, isn't it? 
So he was a perfect product, but he was not the perfect of all products because God had other creations. So he had the seal of perfection as a product. Amen? That's the first thing you must understand. He was created perfect. God didn't create Satan. He created Lucifer. And he was perfect as a state, as an object. Number two, he was full of wisdom. Meaning, he had the wisdom, he had the wisdom that was needed for him. He had the wisdom that was needed for him. He didn't have all wisdom. He just had the wisdom he needed to function as an angel. He was full of wisdom. He didn't have all wisdom. Only one has all wisdom. God. He was full of wisdom in his capacity. He was full. Now, i like you to understand this. When you buy a lamb, right? When you buy a lamb at the shops, they are in full strength at that moment of time. Is that right? As you start to use them, they reduce in strength. They cannot increase in strength. The only time they suddenly become brighter than they've ever been is because they're going to blow off. I know some of you are beginning to see light, but I hope <laughs> this revelation is a face for you. All right? And this is what happened. It, it, it is bright at its maximum. It is full. But after you start to use it, it's going to get less and less and less and less. That's how you must understand. He was full of wisdom. He had maximum capacity. He cannot have anything increased. Uh, you must know this is the contention in his heart because he saw man could go from glory to glory to glory to glory. He hated this because he can only go glory stopped. Maximum stopped. But we can go from glory to glory, strength to strength, power to power, but he can only go down, we can go up. Right at our creation, we were different. Are you hearing this? And I cannot understand why you think he is so much more powerful than you. Unless somebody sell you cheap. Are you listening? So he had full of wisdom. He had wisdom as a product, as, a, as an object, he had wisdom in maximum capacity so that he can function accurately according to what he was created for. But he cannot become wiser and wiser and wiser and wiser and get up higher in wisdom. He can only go lower, not higher. Are you hearing? This is all the internal frustration inside Lucifer. That's why internally he was frustrated. The third thing is this, he was full of beauty. He was very beautiful for who he was. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? He was full of beauty. That means he was created beautiful. It cannot be changed, it was created as it is, as a finished product. He was created as a finished product. But God created us in his own image, in his own likeness. But God never created Lucifer in his image or in his likeness. The standing point is also a Object of contention. Are you listening? Yes. I hope we are stripping the devil little by little. Are you hearing? 
So you can see that he was created beautiful, but he was not created like God. He was not created in God's image. He was not created in God's likeness. But he was created beautiful. But that beauty was not the beauty that God carried. Amen? I know some of you are savoring this. Enjoying this. Yeah. Hey, I tell you, it's called payback time. Amen. Enjoy this. Every answer, just like oh, feel well, feel good. As you tear the devil little by little, just peel that off little by little. Make him feel it. Because if you know so much about him, he is too embarrassed even to appear. Are you with me? It's too ashamed to embarrass even to appear. Why? Because you just savor every moment. Just rub this in. Are you hearing me? So he was beautiful, but he didn't have the image and likeness of God. God created out of his word. He said, let there be angels. Angels came forth. When God created the heavens and the earth, he didn't create the heavens and the earth in his likeness, in his own image. When he created the angel, he didn't create them in his own image, in his own likeness. He created them for purpose, for function. He created them for jobs. He created them to move things. But when he created us, he created so that he can live inside us. He was beautiful, but not that beautiful. Are we hearing? That's why the scriptures say, how lovely are your dwelling places. Wherever God dwells, it becomes lovely. But God never dwell in Lucifer. God never dwell with Lucifer. Lucifer came and left. He was just there for a purpose. Just like fan. You don't walk around with a fan. We just use the fan when we want, we use. We don't want, we just move away. Like a refrigerator is created for a purpose. It just, you know, the freezer is created for a purpose. We're not just going to carry the freezer around everywhere. No, it serves a purpose. And that's about all. He was used and disused. He was created beautiful, but it's not as beautiful as we are. Are you hearing this? Okay. Let's go to number four. Well, we're trying to do verse by verse so that we can understand this. You were in the Eden, the garden of God. Write down number four. He was in the garden and not in the house. He was just a garden instrument, my friends. We are in the house. Whose house we are. We are his house. We are his habitation. You are in the Eden, but in the garden. I hope it's in your Bible. Okay. See, this is what exactly happens why the devil doesn't want us to have this subject. <laughs> he said, you were in the Eden, but the garden of God. That simply means this. He was not dwelling right in the midst with God continually. Every now and then, God wanted to have a garden stroll that was Lucifer. But when God lived in the house, he was out. Think seriously. I don't want you to have this idea that the devil, Lucifer, was before God all the time. No, no. He only appeared when God wanted everybody. So when everybody came, he also came along. He was not given special audience. 
Are we hearing? Yeah. But you and I are different. God will leave everything aside and come to walk with Adam. He said, look, our top priority, he left everything aside. He said, the cool of the day, nobody disturbs me. I'm going down for a walk. I'm going to go and meet my man. God made time. Amen. God made time for Adam. God made time. And today you and I can have free access day and night. All day, all night. We can meet him. All day, all night. We can meet him. Any day we can come before his presence. The devil was created. He was restricted to a certain territory. He was not free to roam around anywhere. Are you breathing? Yes. Write down. Number five. Are we number five? Yes. Okay. Every precious stone was your covering. He was clothed with stones that will reflect the light that came from God. He was created with stones that will reflect the light of God and magnify God's light. He was created with every kind of precious stone that will reflect and magnify God's light. The, the closest I could explain to you is, you know how in the, sometimes you go to a bar or a, a dancing hall, there is this ball that has that, you know, all the mirrors out there. So when the light shines, it just turns and he starts to move the thing. Uh, that's, that's all I can tell him. He is that ball in the nightclub. You know what I'm saying? So he had all the stones. He had diamond, he had topaz, emerald, lapis lazuli, topaz, whatever. So when the light shined, the, the, the radiance of light that passed through him reflected and made it beautiful. But he was not the one carrying the beauty. He was just reflecting what he was receiving. Are you with me? It was not inside him. Do you know, if you take a diamond and keep it in the drawer, nobody knows nothing about it. But when you bring it into the light, then you have brilliance. Are we hearing? There is nothing unless light hits it. There is nothing beautiful about it until light hits it. The way light passes through the diamond, that's why they have to be cut in a certain way so light will pass through it in a certain way and gives you brilliance. Just agree with me because you don't know the signs about diamonds. You know, for the Americans, the largest diamond is the whole best one. But I went to South Africa and found out diamonds is a sign. Not just the biggest one. Their brilliance, their visibilities, their colors, their spots. And in fact, you can write your, you, you can have a identification mark right inside a diamond. All that is science. I was like, wow, this is just a stone. And so much work on a stone. It's just amazing. So he was like that. He received light and he reflected light, but it was not his. The day God took his light away, he became the prince of darkness. God just took himself away, he became prince of darkness. Everything was gone the moment God moved out. He lost everything about himself. There was no life apart from God. But he thought everything was inside him. That's the problem. There was no life inside him except light that came from outside. He was a son of mourning. All right? He was a brightness of the morning, but the brightness was not him. He was a light and life of God. So light, light was shining from outside. He had, 
he had these, all these precious stones built into him. Amen? So that when he turned in the presence of God, God's light will manifest everywhere. Amen? So he was just a helper to get the lights moving in every direction. He was in charge of sound and lights. Not much of a place, but he was in charge of lights, sound and light, you know. So that's what he was involved. He was just letting the light shine in every direction God wanted. So whenever he turned, God's radiance began to spread into all the heavens. So he was just there as an instrument for that very purpose. Are you hearing? Now, let's look in verse 13. The following verse, goal and the workmanship of your settings and sockets. On the day you were created, they were prepared. Number six, he had wind instruments built into him. Wind instruments built into him. Is that a King James Version? The American Standard. King James? That's a King James. Give me that verse. Verse 13. The workmanship of your trimbles and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Trimbles and pipes. So when the light of God came, the stones reflected light. When the wind of God came, it produced music. So when the winds of God came upon the pipes and upon the lyre and upon the trembles, it begins to vibrate and resonate music. He was created for that very reason. Light and the wind. So that's how he was created. He was created with all kinds of wind instruments inside his body. Are you with me? If you can see the picture, it will help you. And that's often why he is associated with worship. The wind of God came mightily upon him. And because of that reason, as the wind passed through the pipes, they resonated with sound. Are you hearing? And one of the things that the devil hates most is sound. I say one thing that the devil hates most is sound. Walls collapse with a sound. If you confess with your mouth, if you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. Sound is one of the things that the devil hates most. That's why God came down with a noise, like a violent rushing wind. Gave them a new language, gave them their voice, crying in the wilderness. The devil hates that because anyone who can let the wind of God flow upon them and become God's voice resonating on the earth, he hates it. He'll try to imprison the word. Are you listening? Because God's voice, God's wind would come mightily upon this, this, this created angel and he will sound. Like the sound of many waters, the sound will flow out through him. Wind instrument, the wind will carry the sound and amplify the sound. That's what he really was. That's how when the Spirit of God moves upon you and you start to speak the Word of God boldly and there's a sound of God's Word coming out, the devil fri is frightened, he hates it. That's why when we praise him, we defeat the enemy. When we open our mouth and there's audible praise with the loud praises of God in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hands, we will strike the enemy. That's why when you open your mouth and begin to praise him, you push the enemy out, you destroy the enemy. When you open your mouth and begin to pray, the wind of God comes upon you and start to pray. At the sound of your voice, things will begin to happen. At your word, we'll cast our nets. 
Lazarus, come for the sound of God's voice coming through will move the devil out. Devil, hell will have to move out. That's why God must allow you and I to discover the, the confidence of hearing your own voice that has been stirred by the Spirit. When the Spirit of God will stir your voice and stir your heart and you must be excited to hear that sound. When you sing in the Holy Ghost and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit and, and become excited by the wind of the Spirit of God, lifting your voice to new heights. You must feel that. Because he was like that. In the day you were created, you were prepared this way. When the winds of God will come, the light of God will begin to shine. You will radiate, reflect light. When the winds of God will begin to blow, you will carry sound. Oh. Are you clear? Yes. Number seven. I hope you enjoy this. Enjoy this thoroughly so that, so that you know who you are. Created greater than him. Amen. Number seven. You were the anointed cherub who covers. Write down number seven. He had an anointing. He had an anointing. So devils are never impressed by anointings because they had them. All right? So if you're operating by the anointing, you're not much different. What did I say? Some of you are so fast. And some of you are just hopeless. You are the anointed cherub who covers. All right. So the devil had an anointing. So he's never impressed with an anointing because he carried it. But we just don't have the anointing. We have the anointed one. 1 John 2 20. 20. All right. We have the anointed one, not just the anointing. We have the capacity not just to carry an anointing, we have the capacity to carry the anointed one. We not just carry a little bits and pieces of some oil. Are you hearing me? We carry, we have the anointed one. Some people are so excited, they lift their hand and they feel like there's some oil there, they were so excited. You can put gallons of it on your head. But what is inside is more important than what's on the outside. Amen. Don't, don't, don't panic because of, you know, oh, I, I found gold dust. and I, it, it, Gold must be our nature. Don't find the dust outside. Make sure the dust is inside. We are so superstitious. We are so excited. Oh, I lift my hand. I felt like oil. It's okay. When I... Put my hand on the head like this. I also find oil. I put my head on my forehead. I can find oil too. It's a lot of oil there. See, it shines. I don't know why you pride yourself in all kinds of things like this, which is really doesn't matter whether you have oil on your head or not. You better be oil inside you. You better be oil so that you're not squeaky. Amen. All these charismatic experiences, thank God for it, but move on. Just move on. He said, so that's where he is. Number eight, I placed you there and you were on the holy mountain. God gave him a place in his government. God gave him a place in his government. God gave him a place in his government. I place you there on the holy mountain of God. Mountain always speaks about the government of God. God gave him a place in his government. Are we hearing? So God allowed him to share some form of rulership. Are you with me? Yes. And God said to man, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, take government, 
establish my government on planet earth. Are you with me? So everything God gave to him, God gave more to men. He said, I place you there on the mountain of God. He gave him a place. Number nine. Are we number nine? You walk in the midst of stones of fire. God gave him a place in his presence. God gave him a place in his presence. Are you ready for this? You ready to hit back, huh? You ready to hit back? God gave the devil a place in his presence, but God gave us his presence. It frustrates the devil. God said, okay, Lucifer, when I'm gathered, this is your place. You're the counselor. You sit on my left. All right, the elders sit on my right. And so you have a place in my presence. But for men, he said, I will be with you. I will be with you. I give you myself to you. Give my presence to you. Not only you have a place in my presence, I have a small seat there for you. A small stool there for you. But now I give my presence over. I give you my presence. He said, Lo, I'm with you even to the ends of the age. I will be with you. I am is going to be with you right to the ends of the age. Okay, number 10. I don't know how much more he can take, but let's give it to him. Verse 15. You are blameless in all your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. Write down. Number 10. He chose, he chose unrighteousness and thereby became born again into a devil. He chose unrighteousness and thereby became born again into a devil. When he chose unrighteousness, he desired unrighteousness, not righteousness, but unrighteousness. He was blameless in all his ways until unrighteousness was found in him. He chose unrighteousness and thereby he changed his form. It wasn't God who changed him. He changed himself by his own choice, by his own will. Because there are three things that you need to understand. Sin, trespass and iniquity. Sin, trespass, and iniquity. All these produce lawlessness. Sin, trespass, iniquity. All these produce lawlessness. Sin is a nature. Sin is a nature. Trespass is breaking the boundaries. Sin is a nature. Trespass, T R E S P A S S. Trespassing, trespass is. Breaking the ancient boundaries, crossing the boundaries, walking against restraint, sin is nature, right? Sin talks about the nature, the operational dynamics within the person. Trespass is breaking the ancient boundaries and the restraint and the restrictions. Iniquity is means the conflict of wills. 
Iniquity refers to the conflict of wills. All right, sin refers to the nature. Trespass refers to the breaking of restriction, boundaries, and confines that God places you in. Iniquity means the conflict of wills. You're workers of iniquity. That simply means there's a conflict of will. You don't operate by God's will anymore. You operate at your own will. He said, you were blameless in all your ways from the day you were created. He chose unrighteousness, sin, trespass, iniquity, and then thereby these things became evolved in his life. He became the product of his own creation. Because this saying is so that you become what you desire to become. You become what you choose to become. God created him blameless. But he recreated himself. That's why you and I, my friends, have the power to recreate ourselves out of iniquity into righteous living. What the devil had going backwards from righteousness to iniquity. We have power to move away from what he had no power in. He had no power. He walked into unrighteousness. We have power over sin. We can move back into righteousness. Devil can go one way. We have gone one way. We now can come out and God has given us power to move back into righteousness. The devil can only submit to sin and yield to unrighteousness. He has no power to go back to righteousness. But we have. Are we hearing? We have power to break the power of sin. We can go back to a blameless way. We can walk in a blameless way before him. God said, walk before me and be blameless. He said, have you seen this man? A blameless man, turning away from evil. That's what God said to Lucifer, to Satan, concerning Job. A blameless man. Are we hearing? So what the devil had no power, we have power. He created himself into a hole. From righteousness, he stepped down lower and he became wicked. From righteousness, he moved to unrighteousness. But we have power to come out from unrighteousness and go into righteousness. Listen to this very carefully. Even the non-Christian has that power. It's not just Christian. Non-Christian can today decide, I want to be born again. Choose God's word, it can come out. Not just Christians, Christ, non-Christians too. They can say, today I want to be born again. I receive the word and I can move out from the power of sin and move into the power of righteousness. Just like that. Tells you, devil does not have that control. The control is still in our will. That's why the Bible says what? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. If you yield your will to the will of God, what happens? You receive power to resist the enemy. Including non-Christians have power to move out. Amen? For most of us, we think non-Christians are under the bondage of the devil. You know, they are so controlled, so ruled. I don't think they can ever be free. And it's all these lies of the enemy that runs in our head. Anybody can be changed. I said, anybody can be changed. Anybody can be saved. Anybody can be healed. Anybody can be delivered. Nobody is under the power of the devil. If the day they choose, the moment they say yes to God, that's it, they're in. That's how powerful it is. But in our religious mindset, the world is a difficult place. It's not possible. They're all hardened. It's impossible. The devil controls them. The devil has done this. No, no. If you can lock into the wheel, touch the wheel, and they say yes. Whosoever 
will. Can you see the possibility of saving people? I said, can you see the possibility of healing? Can you see the possibility of teaching, touching any person on planet earth? You know, we're thinking that is difficult. This is easy. That one is very difficult. That's a hard country. This is difficult. So we have all our own theories because we don't understand the process. That's why anybody can be touched. I said anybody. The hardest nut can be cracked because we have the tools. The tool is touch. If God opens your heart and touches them, will and they said i will they cross from devil's side to god's side they move from an evil wicked lifestyle into a place of being born again become children of the most high god just translate from darkness into the kingdom of his son how powerful the possibility of reaching the earth is so easy it's so clear it's so possible Amen? It's so easy to reach any part, any world, any person. Any person you talk to, you can be talking to any person. If you, all the Holy Spirit has to do is to help you touch that place and give them the power to make the right decision. And they say, yes, that means they move out from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of His only begotten Son. Just like that. Whole nations can be changed. I say whole nations can be changed. Whole cities can be affected. We have this theory, very difficult. Their mind, they, are, they, they got so many things in their head. Their religion, you know, the curse, the idols. No, no. If you just can connect, they're in. Can you feel? I said, can you feel? Wow, this is, this is, this is easy. Just like making a sales. Or are you trying to sell some product, get, get somebody, they agree with you and they, they buy. People do it for a living. They do it for a job. If you work hard on anything, will you get it? Yes. I say, is it very difficult to get them saved? No. Work at it. Anybody can be saved. Anybody can be delivered. Anybody can be set free. Why? Because the key is not the devil. The key is the will. The key is not the past. The key is not how many sins they have done. The key is, does not matter what they have done until then. What they do now. The day, moment you say, Lord, come into my heart. A man moves out from the kingdom of darkness into the, from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of his light. The past is cut off. Serious. Number 11, I think. Is it 11? By the abundance of your trade, you were internally filled with violence and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as propane from the mountain of God. I destroyed you, O covering cherub. Let me just continue to read first. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I put you before kings that they may see you. By the multitude of your iniquities, in the righteousness of your unrighteousness of your trade, you profane your sanctuaries, therefore I brought fire from the midst of you, and it has consumed you. I have turned you to ashes on the earth, in the eyes of all who see you. Right on number 11. The devil had a priestly anointing to bring worship to God. The devil had a priestly anointing to bring worship to God from the earth. The devil had a priestly anointing to bring worship to God from the earth. The Bible talks about the multitude of your iniquities in verse 18. In unrighteousness of your trade, you profane your sanctuaries. Now, when God created Lucifer, he gave him one third of the angels and they were on the earth. Lucifer is considered the ruler, or at least the one who had domain over the earth. 
So from here, from the earth, they brought worship to heaven. And from heaven, they brought God's government down. That is the trade. Trade does not mean just dollars and cents. It means what you bring up, what you bring down. It's called butter trade. Are you with me? Butter trade. That means to say you, you, you give something to get another something. So in the abundance of, in the multitudes of your trade, or in the abundance of your trading, as you go up and bring worship, and you bring government of God down, in the abundance of your trade, your heart became filled with violence. What did he say? Why should I give to God everything that God is receiving? I could take it for myself. Why give God worship when I can become worshipped? Why give God honor when I can take honor for myself? So his heart became filled with violence. Violence means to aggressively take what belongs to others. Violent men take. Is that right? So in, in, in all that he was doing, all that God ordained him to do, his heart became internally filled with violence. He said, why must I give God worship from my sanctuary? I might as well receive everything for myself. Are you with me? Why should we give worship to God? Let me become the God and receive the worship. This is what happened when you and I began to realize this, that in, the, in his wisdom, by reason of his splendor and his beauty, and all that deceived him to take what belongs to God for himself. Are you hearing me? He took the glory. He took the worship. He took the honor. That's why the angels, what did the angels say? Read the book of Revelation. To him belongs all glory. All honor, because this is the things that angels ascribe to God, and these are the things they try to take it away from God. That's why angels permanently are sounding in heaven that these things don't belong to us, they belong to Him. Honor and glory, worthy to receive worship. And that's what they are ascribing to Him. Why? Because those are the things that devils like to steal. For the angelic creation, it is like, I'm not saying it's their penance, it is their declaration. Letting all the earth know what devils try to steal and men try to steal from him is what angels ascribe to him as a message to the earth. Holy, 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 the whole earth is full of his glory. That's why if you watch this, this, the services in heaven, you know what men want to steal, what nature of sin wants to steal. You are worthy for taking away that, all that he is worthy to receive. All honor, all power, all blessings belongs to him. You can see the angels describing and ascribing to him all that he is worthy to receive. Are we hearing so the devil will try everything possible in, in his desire from the sanctuary. He, he take everything back for himself. So his heart became internally filled with violence. He tried to take everything. But what did God say? I give my glory to no other. Is that right? I want you to remember this. One day the Lord walked into my room. And as he was conversing with me, and as he was walking out of the door, I, I still remember Jesus looking half, you know, his, his face was just halfway towards me. With, he looked at me and he says, I share my glory with no other. He looked at me and he pointed his finger and he says, you are not another. And he walked out. He said, I share my glory with no other. But he said, you are not another. You are part of me. We are not another. We are part of him. Ah, that left me in tears. That left me. I couldn't sleep that night. That was it. It was over. Sleep was canceled. Yeah. Can you imagine how God would make things so clear to you? He said, 
I will not share my glory with another. Are we another? No, we are part of him. That means what? He will share his glory with us. That's why he glorifies us. He glorifies the Christ in us. Amen. He shares his glory. He shares his honor with us. Everything that the devil tried to steal, God gives to man. He gives man honor. Amen. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter is the honor of men to search it out. A prophet is not without honor. Not and without is two negatives. Means he is with honor. Who, how did he receive honor? God opens up for him what nobody else can see. Brings him, he reveals, and in Amos 3, 7, he reveals to him the secret plans. All that he himself wants to do, he reveal it to the prophets. What greater honor than that can you get? That's why I say a prophet is not without honor. He is already with honor. Who gave him the honor? God has already given him the honor. That's why when a prophet goes out there, he's not trying to get honor from people because he's already honored. God has already honored him. The honor of God is higher than the honor of man. Since we have received honor, why must we go around compromising what he has given to us? Why do we want to look for that which is of the earth when we have received that which is of the heavens? So God has honored the prophet. Are we hearing? So everything that the enemy tried to take from God, God gave it to us. God said, there's a way how these things can come. It's not by robbing, it's by giving. There's one who gives and gives and gives and prospers. There's one who keeps and keeps and keeps and becomes poor. The devil's nature is to take what does not belong to him. Those who are born again, give to him who is due. And all these things will be added to us. That's why the priesthood that takes and takes and takes is a demonic priesthood. I say it again, that the, the, the priesthood that takes and takes and robs the people, robs the people, robs the people, and does not return is a demonic priesthood. So for everything that we take, we must be multiplied, return to the people so that the people are truly blessed. Can you say amen to that? Let's close with number 12. The sound of where are we? 12. All who know you among the people are appalled at you. You have become terrified. You will cease to be forever. You will you'll cease to be forever. Have we got this? Verse 19. Write down. The devil who terrifies will himself become terrified. The devil who terrifies will himself become terrified. He who deceives has become deceived. He who frightened has become frightened. You have become terrified. Listen very carefully because the devil cannot do what has not happened. Are you with me? He cannot deceive unless he himself is deceived. He's called a deceiver, but he was first deceived. Are you with me? So he is not the only one deceiving you, but he is the one who was deceived before. He reproduces after that. Are you clear? And that is the reason why the devil who is releasing sin was is now become subject to sin he has no power over sin sin destroys him as much as he is using sin to destroy others a man who is afflicted with aids is spreading aids but the aids is also killing him i raise my case okay 